Before I entered the Dominican order, I was a professional musician, so I naturally have a sensitivity to church music. Now, I've often asked, is there a type of music most fitting for Christian liturgical worship, particularly the holy sacrifice of the Mass? Now, there's no way I'm giving one single answer to this question. It's just too much of a minefield. I was not Catholic for very long before I realized how heated were the debates over music in Mass. So before we answer the question, we must first ask, why are debates over music in church so toxic in the first place? Why do we seem to argue in circles accomplishing nothing? I would suggest that largely in the modern world, when we debate about music from Mass, we aren't really debating at all, but rather talking past each other, simply showing a force of wills and then retreating to our respective bunkers. I would also suggest that this is the case because of one fundamental error. Regarding liturgical music, we have confused principles with preferences. In debates over liturgical music, we have largely replaced principles with preferences, placing preferences over principles. And then once preferences rule, we simply throw out the principles altogether. Let me explain what I mean. Imagine that a friend approaches me on, say, a Thursday and says, hey, Father Brad, I'm having a really important event on Friday, and I need music to accompany this event. What music do you suggest that I plan? Now, at this point, I have a decision to make. I could answer in one of two different ways. First, I could answer, well, I think you should play 90s rock. I like 90s rock. Or perhaps you should play post-bop jazz. I like that too. And this first answer would indeed be correct. I do like 90s rock, and I do like post-bop jazz but I could also respond in a second way. Before offering my personal preference in music, I could respond to my friend's question with a question of my own. I could ask my friend, what type of event are you having on Friday night? Now, this second response, that of inquiring about the type of event the music is for in the first place, would actually be more thoughtful than the first. It would be more thoughtful because the type of event my friend is having would condition, if not entirely change, the type of music I suggest as best to accompany the event. For example, if my friend was having a rip-roaring graduation party for his college fraternity, perhaps 90s rock would indeed be best. But on the other hand, if my friend was having a viewing for a deceased relative whose funeral was the next Saturday, perhaps 90s rock or post-pop jazz would not be best. In either case, the type of event my friend was having would determine the type of music I suggest to accompany. Now, in either case, only when I know the type of event can I offer a reasonable musical suggestion, at least one that can be taken seriously. Now, this is so because without knowing the type of event the music will accompany, my musical suggestions would reflect merely my personal preference in music without arising from any principles that connect my musical suggestions with the event itself. Now, if we apply this illustration to Christian worship, we can clearly see why so many arguments over liturgical music go nowhere at all. So often, what seems to be a debate over music for Mass is actually one of two alternative arguments. First, it might be the case that what appears to be a debate over liturgical music is nothing more than a squabble over personal musical preference. And if this is the case, the debate is futile. And the old maxim holds true, de gustibus non est disputandum. There's no disputing mere taste. But second, and this is far more difficult to accept, what appears to be a debate over music for mass might be only a veiled schism over the type of event the holy sacrifice of the mass even is. In other words, what appears to be a disagreement over music for Mass might be only the tip of an iceberg of a deeper division over the very meaning of why we offer the Holy Sacrifice in the first place. For example, if the Mass is a display of the priest's preaching style or presiding style, perhaps the music should reflect that of a formal performance. Or if the Mass is a casual gathering, like a meal with friends around a campfire, 
Perhaps the music should be more like a folk gathering. Or on the other hand, if the Mass is a singular and unique event, unlike any other in history, and incomparable with any other human offering, then perhaps the music should reflect this otherworldly unicity. As I said, this second alternative might be harder to accept, and rightfully so. We don't like to think about divisions among us running so deep. So here is our task as we move forward, to uncover the principles, not preferences, that have always underlaid the music chosen for liturgical worship. And once uncovered, to express these rules and norms and principles by which the Church has always augmented her worship with music. Indeed, these principles do exist. The Church has, especially in recent times, offered consistent guidance on this matter. So in the next few videos, we will examine these principles. Brothers and sisters, keep studying. This is Father Brad Elliott for the Western Dominican Province. <laughs>